Now in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the FlashForge AD5X. And this is one of the most affordable multicolor 3D printers that you're going to find on the market. We're going to take a look at this printer from a farm owner's perspective. Can this work in a farm? We're going to take a look at the prints. We're going to look at what my experience has been. And I'll share with you why you may want to consider this printer as an entry-level printer for your home or even one to add in a farm environment. Let's get right to it. Now, before going through all the prints, I wanted to share with you kind of the specs for this printer. Uh, first of all, this is a Core XY printer, and it's one of the most affordable Core XY printers on the market, especially during this launch. You're going to be able to print in four colors, as you can see here on the side. So there's four spools, and this is actually the filament I would say management platform that's going to allow you to switch between different color prints. You're going to be able to set this printer up very fast. They claim 10 minutes or less, and I want to tell you that it's probably really close to that. I didn't time myself, but this was an effortless printer to set up. Now, the other thing about this printer is speed. Uh, despite the fact that it is a smaller printer, it is still printing at a phenomenal speed of up to total max speed of 600 millimeters per second with accelerations of 20,000 millimeters per second. So as you think about those numbers, and you're wondering, what does that mean to you? It basically means that this printer is going to print fast. And as it's traveling from one side to the other, it's going to travel super fast. Now, the reality is, is that I don't run things, nor do I know of any uh, 3D uh, print user that would print that fast. But it's good to know that those are the upper levels. Typically, I find myself printing at probably about 300 millimeters per second, not something that fast. Now, this is also... For the most part, for us and our experience, they do claim um, great, I would say, print success. And I, I have to say that I maybe only have had one print fail on me. And let's be very clear about one thing. This printer, I've had this printer now for a little bit over two months as we've been testing. So I've had a pre-release version, which means I've had pre-release firmware. And I've been seeing the firmware uh, come through and upgrade as well as the software that supports this. Which, by the way, it does have an aversion of Orca Slicer that supports this. And for those of you who are Orca Slicer fans, they also have the latest release of Orca does include this printer as a default profile, which I absolutely love. So you don't have to work with proprietary um, software. You can actually work with something that is used by everyone in the industry. Now, um, they refer to this little platform right here, this little box that you see right there, as their IFS. And that's what's going to give you the ability to switch filament uh, from one color to another. Now, while this printer is going to be able to support a lot of different types of filaments, the fact that this thing is open and there's no enclosure and there's no heating, I'd say that this is going to be best suited for PLA. Can you get away with other materials? In my situation, I said I couldn't because of the, the temperature, the working environment that I'm in is cooler. And I found that I got some warping. So I did all my testing in, in the PLA. Even though they, they claim that you could support other uh, type materials, it just wasn't feasible for me given, again, the environment I'm in. Typically, as you can see behind me, all of my printers are enclosed, and then those give me the ability to support um, other material types that require enclosures and uh, give you, again, that flexibility to, pr pr to print materials that, for example, that may need um, warmer uh, controlled environments and not one that is cool as the area that I'm in. Now, from a bed perspective, this printer does have a smaller bed. We're looking at a 220 by 220 by 220. And I want to say that that's probably the, the one negative that I have about the printer is that especially with everybody demanding larger print uh, beds, this is too small for, for me particularly. It's going to work with some of my parts that we use in our farm. And just to give you guys some background, we print around 42,000 parts a year and for our farm. And while this printer works fine from a quality perspective, it just doesn't have the bed size that I need for the size of my parts, which you're going to see in a couple seconds. Uh, but the nice thing that you have right here is that you do have a PAI sheet. Uh, this is also no stick, no glue. I haven't used any glue whatsoever in any of the prints, but the size is just uh, too small for me as I look at some of the volume that I'm looking to push through. Uh, great um, intro or beginner printer, or if you're starting with smaller parts, this is going to work, especially if you're going to be printing, let's say, something like this. If you're going to print parts that are the size of this benchy, you can fill that plate up. That's not a problem. But if you're going to be printing larger parts, like this is the kind of stuff that we would print, then as you can see, all you could do is print one if I'm lucky and I really can't uh, because of kind of like the what you some of the not, no print areas that you have here. Um, you 
can maybe print two parts. In my case, I know that I can only print one of these. So I need a larger printer that's going to give me the ability to print four pieces or more in order for us to keep our production. Now, that said, there are some specialty parts that we print, for example, and we'll look at that, uh, that uh, finish in a couple seconds, that we print that this works with very nicely. So like this part right here, not a problem. So this is a single part machine, at least from my case. So you'll need to evaluate that for yourself. We're not a channel or, or, a, or a farm that prints dragons or any toys. We print functional parts. So we really focus on the functional side. Now, on the side here, you'll notice everything is exposed on the printer. So there's nothing that is enclosed. There's no cover. There's nothing on the side. So this really reminds me of the P1S, when the actual the P1P, when that first came out, where there was nothing really there, just the frame, no door or anything. I would expect, given where all the screws are and the things, that you could probably get an enclosure at some point to actually enclose this, and then it's going to really change the value. But the other thing that it's missing is that it doesn't have a light, right? It's really bare bones. It doesn't have a camera either. So given the fact that it doesn't have those components, I'm sure that uh, in the future there's going to be some add-ons. Then it becomes uh, something that is more viable for me as I like to monitor my prints and see how things are going. Now, taking a look at the menu, let's get closer right here for a second. Now, the menu itself, this is a very, very usable menu. It's very responsive. So you have your home, you have your filament, or actually your prints that you've printed. You have here your filament, and you can see this is your multi-material setup of all your filament. I have actually three spools in there right now. You also then have your, uh, again, your movement uh, settings, uh, Wi-Fi, network can it is Wi-Fi enabled and it works really well. Uh, here's all the device information and then the firmware that I'm currently using, which I'm in firmware version 1.10. And you know, that's pretty much all there is to it. It's really simple, it's very straightforward, and it's also been very responsive. Now on the side here, you can see that IFS a little bit closer up. And just want to show you about how, you know, just the spools are mounted and held in this guy. So uh, basically there's no moving parts here. It's just this here. Well, so basically all you have is this moving part here and nothing else. It does not have a motor. It does not retract. It's basically I'm um, sitting here and as it, uh, the actual filament is, is drawn into the printer, uh, this little mechanism here kind of helps, gives you the right tension so that it gets pulled in. Pretty straightforward when it comes to that. And you can see each one of these has its own uh, path, PTFE tube, that actually brings it in to the actual printer. Now, for the most part, like I mentioned, I've been printing the PLA series. Uh, there's other filament that they uh, say will be supported, but you'll have to make sure that you're in the right environment uh, to be able to support that because, again, uh, there's no temperature. Now, as we mentioned, the printer is supposed. Now, as we mentioned, the printer is going to be able to support PETG, PLA, TPU, uh, PLACF, PETGCF. But again, I really prefer having an enclosure in order to do that. The nozzle temperature and the bed temperature are respectable. Like you're getting a bed temperature of 110. That's going to give you a lot of flexibility. So that's going to give you again that uh, ability to be able to print those um, higher temperature type products that you'd want to be able to push through this printer. And then the fact is that the extruder can get up to 300 C. That's really good. But again, my concern is that it's open. And for me and in my environment, uh, those are no touch materials unless it wasn't closed. Now we have the printer kicked off. We're going to let it print so that you can see how the startup is as we go over some of the things that I printed. First of all, the traditional Benchy, you have to print a Benchy, you know, that's kind of like the gold standard of things. And as you can see right here, this Benchy is, it looks great. This is a really nice, good quality, has great detail, right? And for the most part, I would say it had a great first layer too. Take a look at that first layer. That first layer was pretty nice. It came out, everything is very legible and everything is very clear. And we're going to start out on another Benchy so you can see what I'm talking about. I really like how crisp these uh, the letters are right here. So really nice uh, Benchy. Uh, we also then printed a first la layer sheet. And this is where everything I'm doing on this printer, by the way, guys, is I'm not tweaking anything. I'm using out of the stock profiles. There's things that can be improved. So what you're seeing here is a baseline. This is where things start. So this is my first layer test, and you can see that it did really, really well here. And then all of a sudden on this side, it had some defects. Now keep in mind that this was um, bed leveling took place, and you can see 
great prints right here up to this point. Now, the one thing is, is that this is not coming apart. It's not, uh, you know, you're not having those type of problems when it comes to extrusion or leveling on this side, but you can see definitely in this side that there's some tweaking to do, some leveling that has to be done, or I have to make some modifications uh, to you know the z-axis possibly to, to just get this stuff going but this is what things look like now you just heard that clack 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 the one thing I will say and you'll hear me talk about this uh, th throughout is that this printer can be loud it's it's probably louder than it needs to be I really don't think that that clacking this is basically the actual filament being cleaned off and then injected needs to be as loud as this is but that's just one thing to be aware of I wouldn't have this in a common era in your home especially if you're going to be printing because of the loudness and you can hear that again uh, as it's going through now we've been printing functional parts and so what we do is we print a lot of fixtures for uh, the laser community and also pad printing and some other companies and just want to show you the overall quality of what we're getting out of it so the quality is at par with some of my higher end printers that can print more volume and so that's a good thing right so especially for a printer of this type so this came out uh, fine it, we didn't have any issues uh, we also then printed out some displays so again you can see how clean this display is this display looks like it's PLA CF but it's actually just black PLA it's matte PLA nothing else is there now I'm gonna go ahead and move the camera really quick because I want to show you how nice that first layer is and you can see how crisp that uh, those letters that come out of the very bottom of the bench as soon as this guy moves uh, you'll be able to see how nice and clean this is there it is you're getting a peek of it this is what I'm talking about sometimes the first layer in certain areas is super duper nice right um, I just got to figure out what's going on on my left side of my bed because that is crispy and that led to you know some really nice characters on the very bottom of that benchy coming out that were very very legible so you saw already this by the way is a golf ball holder right a display for some of the um, UV printed golf balls that we make we talked about the benchy already you saw that and now what we're going to talk about is um, some fun stuff because I said, you know what, I'm going to print something out that for those of you who like, you know, these kind of things you can print. So this right here, uh, we printed on it and this had supports and look at the quality. This is their, by the way, silk PLA uh, multicolor and you can see how nice this print is. It did a really good job. I did break off one of the teeth uh, or the tooth right here when I was doing the actual uh, filament uh, support removal. But all in all, this came out really good. And you can see that this first layer um, is also spot on. Now, this was in the middle of the bed. It wasn't on the far left side where you started seeing that happening. So this is a really, really nice. You don't see any significant banding. Everything is really smooth. And I just love this print. This print came out really nice. We also then printed um, some functional things. So I, I print a lot of these for testing for when I'm doing laser testing. So this is kind of like representing a koozie. Uh, or not a koozie, a, uh, a tumbler. So this is a 20 ounce tumbler, um, uh, I would say, model. And you could see this did a really nice job. And given the bed size, not a problem with this either. We then printed also, I printed this before and I printed it again on this guy because I wanted to see. Uh, we printed out this headphone holder, right? I printed out with this different material. This is a copper, a silk PLA. And it did a great job doing this as well. Everything came out nice. The tolerances were great. It printed out... Uh, pretty well we did also some fuzzy skin printing and this is a coaster holder and let's just make sure you guys can see that texture right there really nice finish too right and didn't see any defects at all so the printer has good print quality for sure I uh, printed out a larger part on this uh, the bed size will support you know again one item at least in my book and this is a uh, special uh, order uh, product that is used for uh, ventilation and you can see what this looks like really really nice and clean coming from this printer using matte PLA uh, I also then have for jewelry display another piece that we printed right here and this uh, came out really nice as well so you can see how nice and clean this is. This is using matte PLA. This is white PLA. Uh, the PLA that um, I'm printing, if it's not Flash Forge, it's all Polymaker PLA. So this is Polymaker white. The black is Polymaker matte. Uh, it's charcoal uh, PLA. And then the gray is also fossil PLA from Polymaker. So we have that. We did do the traditional uh, cube, right? And the cube there was uh, dimensionally it was pretty accurate right there was some slight uh, deviation nothing substantial but again nothing that you can't change in the software here's one larger uh, display I'm gonna move some of the golf balls off of it so I can bring it up 
and this is a uh, another golf ball display that we did and you know basically as we are promoting this with brands we basically show off you know things like this right and we just put the balls on display let's see if this has anything i don't know if this one has a logo no it doesn't and neither does this one so there's some blanks but this is what we're talking about and then as we focus on the display itself uh, very very clean lines right no banding everything looks really good so what is my I would say feeling about the printer I think the printer is a great especially for the price point this is a great starter printer can it work in a farm I'd say it would depending on the size of your parts my parts are more are larger in size this wouldn't work for me for large parts it would work for individual parts uh, and the price point is going to allow you to scale if you were using this in a farm setting uh, rather easily the fact that this uses Orca is also a benefit because that means you can use one slicer for all your products and that's something that's important to me. I don't want to have to jump between slicer and slicer. I like having one slicer solutions. And then for me, while I'm not really big into multicolor, I am big on large print volumes. So I can have four spools, four spools of the same color. So as one spool finishes, the next spool will kick in, and that's going to be also perfect for me when it comes to a farm-type setup. That wraps up our review. See you in the next video.